am Glaucia Rosas, co-founder and director at the Tech Alliance. In this series of interviews, I am talking with key figures on the international edutech scene to get their perspectives on how schools can really get themselves on track with their education technology. Hi everyone, I am delighted to have with us Andreas Schleicher. Andrea is the director of OECD's Dictorate for Education and Skills and special advisor on education policy to the Secretary General. Many of you will be aware of the OECD's from, the, from its PISA studies, but uh, it is much more in the education space. Uh, it's fair to say that Andrea is possibly the individual on this planet with the best global overview of the current state of education and how it's evolving. So hello, Andreas. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks so much for hosting me, Glossia. <laughs> so, well, let's start with the questions. The OECD appears to uh, be betting on artificial intelligence, robots and blockchain as the major technologies to drive education forward. Can you explain your rationale? Yeah, if you look at artificial intelligence, it can help us make learning more granular, more adaptive, more interactive. You know, while you study mathematics on a computer, the computer can now figure out how you study, what gets you interested, what makes you bored, where you advance, where you get stuck. So that's the power of, of artificial intelligence. And, uh, you know, then you can use big data and learning analytics to help students learn better teachers to get a much better understanding how different students learn differently and embrace that diversity with more differentiated uh, pedagogical strategies. So teachers are super empowered through those kinds of, uh, of technology. Uh, and blockchain comes in through the credentialing part. Uh, you know, and at the moment, we have still very lumpy, heavy degrees and qualifications that often reflect just what we did sometime in the past and not actually what we know and can do today. And with blockchain technology, we should give people, we should be able to give people greater ownership over what they learn and how they learn and where they learn and uh, when they learn over their life cycle. You know, you can basically build your own portfolio of knowledge, skills, and qualifications and uh, own that and expand that. Very, very different from the kind of institutionally driven uh, degree and credentialing system that we have today. So that's where we see the great promises. Now, reality is another story, but at least, you know, that's where we could move. Yeah, and I guess this leads exactly to my next question. So <coughs> looking at the situation now of schools where they are still organizing the cell, themselves with 101 devices, digital safeguarding, online learning, how do you see them moving into this new reality of robots and AI and blockchain? Will, will they need to leapfrog or will this be a slow adoption over the next decades? Mm. And, and by the way, I just forgot the robots part in my previous, you know, uh, statement. And that's maybe the most controversial part because, you know, often we feel uncomfortable when we see sort of robots in the classroom. But uh, there are also here some really interesting and promising examples, you know, when you Language learning is a good example. Uh, the only way how you will never learn a foreign language is in having a teacher talking to you about vocabulary and grammar in secondary school. You know, language is something that we learn early in childhood, that we learn through interaction. So that's actually where robots are very, very effective. Or peer learning, you know, what research shows that sometimes you learn faster by explaining things to someone than by having somebody else explain things to you. And that's, again, you know, with technology robots have been quite effective. So maybe controversial, but still quite promising. But you know, your question is about reality and there we have to acknowledge it's still very patchy. You know, there is uh, some very good examples, uh, but often we also see how technology actually makes things worse, actually. If you just start to use technology to conserve existing pedagogical practice, you get a second best version of pedagogical practice. Now, the question is more how we can use technology to transform what we do to, you know, configure space, time, people, technology in innovative ways. And now some really good examples. I think the pandemic has really given, given this a massive boost. Mm -hmm. You know, we've mm -hmm. probably achieved more in terms of digital transformation and social acceptance for technology in the last year than in the in, in 20 years before. So I think actually we see good examples 
it's taking hold. But uh, overall, I must also say there's still a lot of issues and problems. You know, often teachers face five, six, seven solutions every day. You know, the interoperability and compatibility of technology is very weak. We do not have uh, good learning platforms that are interoperable. So everybody sets up their own platform. Uh, we do not know how to reconcile, you know, the free flows of data with issues around privacy and confidentiality. Uh, lots of unresolved issues where we need to see rapid progress if we want to reap the potential of technology. Definitely. Uh, but it's, I think there are like more people thinking about uh, not how to make, you know, schools or education how it is today, but actually really thinking outside of the box, like, you know, try to imagine something completely different. And now let's, let's create from there. And, and let's see how those two, you know, the schooling, which is very traditional and these new ideas blend in to, to actually transform education. And uh, when, you, when you mentioned the robots um, and AI, there are even from reading the, the you know, the, the issues, the, the, you know, the papers that uh, OECD writes and, and publishes. So there have been a number of cases recently where AI presents undesirable biases. It's not a person, it's, it's you know, AI. So yes, it's essentially uh, a black box. How do you think schools will be able to guard against these types of bias issues? You know, AI is not a magic power. It is just, you know, a great accelerator and, and a massive amplifier. It will accelerate and amplify good educational practice in the same way it amplifies poor educational practice. Now, in a way, it can help you as a teacher understand how different students learn differently and engage with that, or it can reinforce stereotypes by just, you know, making you, you know, replicate patterns that the computer has observed in other students. Uh, so I think that's really, I think, uh, the issue. If you do not understand the algorithms, you're going to be the victim of those algorithms as a teacher. So that's why it is so important that, you know, teachers tomorrow are also good data scientists. The problem of bias isn't new. You know, teachers are inherently biased. You know, yeah. we know about socioeconomic bias. We know about gender bias. Uh, the bias isn't created by the technology, but the bias can get accelerated and amplified. So the answer to this is really helping teachers to become better in diagnosis, to better understand their own perceptions, their own biases. And then, you know, you can better engage with the, the technologies in this and be more, you know, Technology itself needs to be quite transparent to how its algorithms work, you know, what kind of observations are integrated in what way. And again, you know, educators need to become a lot better to become really good data scientists to understand patterns, algorithms, and act on that. And so, again, I don't think this problem of bias is created by technology, but it can be amplified. That is true. Well... One, one more thing for the digital transformation and, uh, and the transformation of education, like uh, educators or data scientists as well is something extremely important. Um, and the OEC, uh, OECD's latest PISA report show a negative correlation with, between the use of education technology and outcomes. So many schools are struggling to make the most of their education technology uh, the education technology that they already have. So how do you think things need to evolve for the teachers, students, and parents to really get the value from technology? Yeah, you know, once again, if you just dump uh, technology into classrooms and teachers use it to do what they did in the past without technology, you're going to get worse results. And that's what you very clearly see in the PISA results, technology intensity. You know, just, you know, uh, substituting technology uh, is not going to give you any better results. It's the answer really lies in using technology to learn and teach in different ways. Uh, and uh, the best technology is one that is present but not visible. Mm -hmm. You know, that is not distracting students. When not, you know, technology is not necessarily about students typing a lot with computers and, and tablets and so on. Uh, the power of technology lies very much in diagnostics in you know seeing how different students learn differently making learning more adaptive and i do think those are areas where we can reap very very significant benefits but um 
it pedagogy needs to be at the heart of this. You know, the technology, again, should be designed around learner needs, around uh, what we know pedagogy uh, should be framed by learning science. And uh, in, in a way, uh, as in other fields of our societies, uh, technology is, is, is a tool that can actually help us do things that are very hard to do in a traditional way. If you teach a traditional classroom with 30 students in front of you, you have no idea what each of them is doing. Uh, you just, you know, pull out students by random. That's not very effective. Technology can help you, you know, again, see what to how those different students learn differently. But then we need to use it intentionally designed around those pedagogical principles. That, yes, and, and that also goes well with your answer <coughs> on teachers being data scientists. So it's mm -hmm. all about, you know, capturing the right data and being able to work on that data. And, you know, teachers are capturing data all day, but not to the same potential because technology obviously can, can do a much faster and effective job in, in pulling this data. Yeah. Um, so reinventing the, the role of the teacher is a recurring theme for o OECD in, the, in this publication. So can you suggest what schools should be doing right now to take a step in that direction? Yeah, you know, like in most other professions, technology uh, frames or reframes the way in which we work. The routine cog cognitive skills are losing in importance. So for teachers, for example, simple knowledge delivery, direct instruction is something where technology takes on a bigger share. And, uh, I would say, you know, over the long run, teachers probably will not compete with technology when it comes to transmission of knowledge. You know, technology just is so much more interesting for students to learn from. Uh, but that doesn't diminish the role of teachers. In fact, you know, I would say in the 21st century, the role of educators will be far more ambitious, far more demanding. You know, the technology pushes us to think harder about what makes us human and how teachers can actually, you know, complement not substitute the artificial intelligence we created in our computers, become great coaches, great mentors, great facilitators, great evaluators, great social workers, great psychologists. And one way, you know, if you as a, as a teacher understand who the student in front of you really is and who they want to become, and you can accompany them on their journey, technology will give you all the tools to do this. But education, it's not a transactional business. It's always a social, a relational enterprise. So when our teachers focus on that human component, they'll be hugely successful. And then actually, I do think it will also make teaching a more rewarding, a more interesting, a more engaging profession. Yes, because I mean, you as a teacher, you know, if, if you've ever been in a class, I mean, you will get to know your students, but that, that might take a long time. So yeah. if you can get mo much more information beforehand, obviously that would that's going to be more effective. And and the last question, actually, is not something I read in any of the reports of OECD, but it's something that many, um, many people in education have been talking about. And I know you, you know, as you work with education and you in, in obviously, you know, international schools and in great countries, but also like remote schools that, you know, need remote learning because they're in the middle of the desert or the Amazon, I don't know. So how do you see, that might be a tricky one, the, you know, metaverse or something similar playing a role in the future of education? Yeah, it's an interesting question. You no, know, again, I think the digital world and the real world are no longer separate. In fact, they become more truly integrated. You can see that in learning spaces, you know, the role of augmented reality, the role of virtual laboratory uh, reality. Now, why would you listen to a teacher explaining to you the result of an experiment when you can do that experiment in a virtual laboratory these days? So I do think, you know, we're going to see a growing integration of the virtual world and the real world. But it's not going to make, you know, life necessarily easier. It will require a whole range of new skills. Can you navigate ambiguity? Can you manage complexity? Can you distinguish fact from opinion? You know, uh, operating in the metaverse may make some things similar, simpler, you know, uh, some, you know, uh, information will help you, you know, fight your way around, but it will also demand much greater skills among individuals to, you know, you know, have that, you know, you need to have a good compass 
and a reliable set of tools that help you, you know, uh, find out, you know, what is right and wrong, what is what is true and what is not true, uh, what uh, are your interests, and uh, you know, you technology and the metaverse is likely to, you know, suck you into an artificial world where you actually, you know, just get distracted by, you know, things. Uh, but you know, to think about, you know, questions around identity, you know, who am I, who do I want to become, those questions will not become less important. They will become more demanding on individuals. And once again, I do think. That's what good education will be about, to help people operate in the, the metaverse or the metaverses, I mean, the multiple yeah. realities in which we find ourselves. Fantastic. Well, Andreas, thank you so much for, for participating, for, you know, allowing us to have some of your time. I know you're very, very busy. So thank you very much. I hope this is very useful to many, many people. Good. Pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you.